Hello and welcome to Hand Yoga. I am Heidi Parks and a really popular question that I have been getting lately is about the thumb, especially some folks who have arthritis in their thumb. It's this base area. So I'm doing a special video upon request for this area, targeting it. I think we will begin simply by warming up our hands, infusing some heat in them, especially if there's an arthritis connection, which for a lot of the people requesting that part of the thumb there is. Warmth is a wonderful antidote. And you can also put some rice in the sock and microwave it or use one of those plug-in heaters. I have a couple different types from Sunbeam that I like to use. You can also use a paraffin wax dip to infuse some warmth in your hands. But simple rubbing hands together is a great way to create some warmth as well. Then I would like to start to stimulate this area just a little bit more. You can use either a Marma stick, I've done videos about this before, or a pencil. I trust you guys have one of these in your home. So I'll begin with my Marma stick. I'm going to run this between my whole hands, activating them. But then especially I would run this along the edge of my thumb and it has this wonderful spiky area that can be really helpful to activate your thumb. So um, if you're using a pencil, you can just run that pencil along there and it gets like 80% of the same job done. It's a little bit nicer with the Marma stick, but not dramatically. So here, if you're feeling that into your wrist, you can also run, oh, that's a nice spot for me. Um, you can run that very gently or press a little bit more firmly just running along your hand. It can be good to take the time to do things at least a little bit symmetrically on your body, even if you are feeling it more in one hand, one thumb than the other. And now let's pause and I'm gonna rest my hands in my lap to notice the difference, to feel the effects. Now I can do something called a, a grid. So you might be familiar with this from my palm grid video. This would be an extension of that. You can use your finger, your thumb to make a grid. You can also use the eraser side of your pencil to press a grid, or you could use either the thin or wide end of your Marma stick to create a grid. Sometimes, if, if your thumb isn't exhausted by doing this, it can be nice to use your thumb because then you get that sensory input from the thumb. So you start to recognize what feels different when I get that sensation of pain or tightness in my hand. It gives you a little bit more sensitivity. So I'm going across very scientifically in a grid to press along my thumb to notice, is there a place that feels more or less tender? Now, I know for myself on my body, if you remember our Marma Point massage, that, uh, that 45 minute session, I really felt a lot in this part of my thumb where those Marma Points are. So for me, it's going to be in here. And I did this massage for my thumb yesterday in a one-on-one -on -one consultation. And it's remarkable how it's not singing to me as much as it did yesterday. I really felt it now. Uh, it's a little harder to demo that. So notice, try and do the same video today and then tomorrow and see how that feels for you. But when you find a point that's tender, so it's a tiny bit tender, but not like it was yesterday, we want to start to use our breath. So we'll press and hold a nice steady, firm pressure, either with our thumb or one of our tools. And 
We want to use our breathing. We'll inhale through the nose. And exhale, releasing through our mouth. You can exhale through your nose if that feels better for you. I do recommend inhaling through your nose if you can do so comfortably. And then an extension of simply pressing and holding is that you could pulse, you could press in and out, up and down to activate and release. And you can also do some circles. I always suggest a counterclockwise circle first. So when I look at it, I'm looking at myself moving counterclockwise. This direction is connected to the moon, to female energy, to um, you know, kind of both to receiving and to letting go, right? But uh, in this instance, it's that nighttime relaxing, restoring. It's it's a direction that kind kind of like help you flush the toilet before you use it again. <laughs> so uh, I like to begin counterclockwise and then shift to clockwise, which is the direction of the sun, uh, a more masculine direction. It's more connected to heat and pranic energy. So filling, filling your cup back up again here, uh, but you don't want it to be double full. So partly why we like to do counterclockwise first. And then when you're done, either holding still, pulsing, or creating those circles, once more, let's rest, pause to notice the effects, the difference that we might feel in our hand. And it's always great information to check how does the other hand feel? And this is where it becomes especially nice if you were doing this practice with your fingers instead of with a tool, you can begin to feel the physical difference in your hand. When I go for a deep tissue massage from a massage therapist, or when I see my chiropractor, and they poke around at my body very, like just a tiny bit, they'll say to me, oh, how about this spot? Does this hurt? And like 95, 98% of the time, they are 100% right. And they don't feel the pain that I feel in my body, but they have trained their hands to know what that feels like. So that's something you can do. You can start to subtly notice, hmm, how does my non-dominant hand feel different from the dominant hand? What's going on here? How do I feel? Oh, like here, I'm really feeling this tendon. And I tend to do a lot of gripping and holding with my left hand that can get a little sticky if I'm not careful. So right here, I'm feeling a tendon, a little, it feels like a piece of string in there that I was not feeling on the other side. So again, whenever you find that spot, let's pause. Inhale through our nose. A deep exhale. And you can be intuitive with how you're moving here. Focus on letting go of that tightness, that holding. And I can keep doing my grid to continue to notice the difference in dominant and non-dominant hand. Again, I'm going to pause and rest between sides. There's so many healing oils and herbal infusions that can be wonderful to incorporate in a massage like this if you maybe aren't in the middle of sewing, you certainly don't want to get oil on your hands, but either with oil or dry, you can do this 
all of these techniques, we're going to move on to using a gua sha. But you could also use a Sharpie chisel tip. You could use a spoon, a lot of other things, but there are some beautiful inherent qualities of using um, this kind of special tool. So moving back to my dominant hand, I am going to just very gently run this along the edge, along the side of my thumb, where a lot of folks have been requesting that extra attention, extra care for their hand. So it looks the same with a more humble tool. Ooh, it feels nice also. You don't want to use anything too sharp. There's a certain roundedness. So like using the back of a butter knife might be a little bit too sharp. You can tell. Um, start really gently. And it can be good even with these tools. You have a natural amount of pressure that you first do this with. And experiment with what happens if I press more lightly, more gently. And then also very carefully, very slowly, you can experiment with what happens if I press a little bit more firmly than what I intuitively start out with. You can go both directions. We're especially trying to break up some of that tightness that builds up in the muscles. Uh, there are certain schools that, that would suggest just going towards your heart. That's an option, but not the only option. I remember specifically asking my personal occupational therapist what she thought about that and she said for me and my body both directions is ideal that's going to break things up loosen stuff more for me my spot as you probably know is more in here uh, but same may hold true for here and you observing the effects in your body is the best tool for figuring that out okay I'm going to rest again, pause to notice the difference in the effects. And I'm going to do that same care for my non-dominant hand. Perhaps not investing as much time, but I do want to know what it feels like, both for the hand creating the massage and what it feels like to receive that movement especially if you are just experiencing pain on one side and not the other. Really, really good information to have to compare. Mm. And rest. We'll send our hands together, palm to palm, together, heart height. This is a very gentle way of applying Sparsa Mudra. Sparsa Mudra is a mudra for applying hands. It's most frequently done on the lung area, like all across the lungs, applying your hands to improve lung health. But Sparsa Mudra connects to simply that act of touching your body, of skin to skin contact, the way your body responds to feeling the presence of another hand. So hand to hand is infusing that energy in your hands themselves. This is a wonderful movement to do if you're just sitting and watching TV. And that can be more spot oriented to your thumb itself. So if I was experiencing a lot of pain in my right thumb, I might find a gentle grip like this one. So applying Sparsa Mudra, sending energy from my left hand into my right hand. I would rest my hands in my lap. And I would relax, feel comfortable, and maybe settle down to watch a movie or at least an episode of a sit sitcom. You can also meditate, but you're gonna get like 80, 90% of the benefit, even if you're not mentally present, focusing in on this. 
simply touching hand to hand works really well. If your issue is with your wrist, with your elbow, with your forearm, with your shoulder, it can be harder to keep your hand up there for an extended period of time. But Sparsa Mudra works any place on your body. It can work on your hip, your knee, if you have a bruise. So you can settle in, wrapping your hand, resting in your lap, and you're going to start to feel a kind of magnetism that happens in your hand. There might be some sweat accumulating in your hand. You're going to feel and know that presence. You can start to understand how sensitive human beings are to being touched with a hand. If you think about perhaps the positive way you feel when someone you love touches you with their hand, you notice that. You could also start to think about, like maybe you're sitting on the subway and a total stranger reaches out and puts their hand on your shoulder or your knee or even someplace more intimate. That's gonna feel really weird. You're gonna be very extremely aware of that hand. So our bodies are attuned to notice touch and especially to notice the touch of a hand. It's not the same as if you're on the subway and someone's knee or their leg happens to be touching your knee or leg. A hand, much more active, really different situation. So my body, with just this simple applying of hands, is really attuned and aware. It's saying, oh, 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 what's happening in Heidi's thumb? And it's sending extra blood, extra awareness to that spot. So this, I cannot tell you how powerful and how simple this movement is. I've been here maybe two minutes. I'm going to remove my hand. Oh, there's like a loneliness that I feel now, this kind of magnetism. Where is that hand now? You can feel like that heat, that sweat accumulation. No one can say I have cold hands now after doing that movement. It's even more effective, I think, than us rubbing our hands together in the beginning of our practice. Now, a lot of the time, if you're feeling that kind of tightness, uh, issues in your thumb, or at least for me, when I feel that, right, in my personal experience, it can be from a lot of intense gripping. Most of the time when I do things in my hands, I'm either stagnant, doing nothing, or I'm doing something very forceful. I'm holding a pencil very actively. I'm pressing with my thumb on my phone. I'm lifting a cup. I'm pushing a needle. I'm pulling the thread through. Uh, I'm gripping the quilt or whatever I'm working. I'm holding an object. I'm driving. I'm holding the steering wheel. The antidote to all of that deep holding tight movement is not stagnancy and doing nothing. The antidote is a gentle movement. Again, I shared this before, but as my physical, my occupational therapist for my hands shared with me, motion is lotion. And that's what's going to soothe my hands. So I'm going to begin and, you know, I was doing that consultation yesterday. Someone was telling me, as soon as they pick up their needle, they feel that tightness triggering all the way down their thumb. So don't grab something, don't squeeze hard. We want to just gently open and close, tapping fingers to the thumb. And now we're going to go a little different. I'm going to open my hands. If this is 100% open, just 80 70% open, and then I'm going to close. If this is 100% closed, 70% closed. So just moving through that 40% of my range of move movement, very gently, very relaxed. I've got my hands here so you can see them. I would recommend that you keep your elbows straight, preferably arms down at your sides. So your hand is kind of resting heavy near your hip. 
all the way down here at your sides, straight elbows. These movements are wonderful because you can get away with them almost anywhere. If I'm going for a walk in the park, if I'm waiting in a line to check out at the grocery store, if I'm microwaving something, this gentle, open, closed, straight elbow movement can do anywhere. I can always be snuggling it into my day. So first we were tapping fingers to our thumb. Now we're doing a very gentle open and close. If we want to uh, work on just one finger at a time. It feels different, has a different benefit. We're going to tap now one finger at a time to our thumb. You can do a lot of exciting mind games with this as well. It can be like your new Sudoku or Zen tangle. So right now I'm a mirror image on either side and I'm tapping kind of circularly. I'm going from my index across and then index again. But I can start to go backwards and forwards. So I'm double tapping at either side. And I can also go, see if I can do it for everyone. So here I'm not, ooh, not doing the same finger in sync, right? They're going across equally, <laughs> but not like a mirror image. So that type of movement, you can see it's not easy. <laughs> And just go slower. The slower you go, the more capable. And that has a different positive effect for you if you go a little slower as well. So lots of things to play with, moving just one hand at a time. But those really gentle, you can give your hands a little wiggle, any kind of gentle movement where you're not gripping, you're not holding, you're not pushing. Do some nice jazz hands. And then what if you slow that down? What if it's not so fast? Really, really gentle, intuitive, relaxing movements. So, so good, especially if you're having a lot of tightness freezing up in this hand. Remember, always listen to your body. Make it a habit to pause after you've done a movement, even these gentle ones. Close your eyes. Notice how did that feel? How is my body reacting to it? You and your own doctor or occupational therapist or other support system, you guys are the ones who really truly know which things are benefiting you and your body. Those are some nice tips, some things that have worked well for me, some advice that I shared with a client recently. Um, please remember to subscribe. I have lots of videos on my Hand Yoga Club playlist. I think this is video number 23 now. So please subscribe. Make sure you're getting that content. I have lots of other videos on quilting and a handmade lifestyle. So click subscribe, check out my playlist, and thank you guys very much. I hope that you are feeling really good and relaxed. Bye-bye.